Then I beheld in a vision of my soul our blissful Lord Christ Jesus coming to his passion tide. And ere he went, he kneeled down and took his mother's blessing. Then I saw his mother falling down in swooning before her son. And Jesus said, My dear worthy mother, I pray you, blesseth me, and let me go do my Father's will. For therefore I came into this world and took flesh and blood of you. When I beheld this glorious sight in my soul and saw how he blessed his mother and his mother him, and then his blessed mother could not speak a word more to him, but fell down to the ground. And so they parted asunder, his mother lying still, as if she was dead. Our Lord went forth his way, and I went to Our Lady and said, Ah, blessed Lady, riseth up and let us follow your blessed Son as long as we may see him, that I may look and enough upon him ere he die. Ah, oh, dear lady, how may your heart lasten and see your blissful son see all this woe? Lady, I may not endure it, and yet I am not his mother. And our lady answered and said, Daughter, I know thou hearest well, that it will not otherwise be. And therefore, I must suffer it for my son's love. We followed forth after our Lord and saw how he made his prayers to his father in the Mount of Olivet and heard the goodly answer that he gave his father again. Then I saw how our Lord went to his disciples and bade them waken. His enemies were near. And then came a great multitude of people with much light and many armed men with staves, swords and poleaxes to seek our Lord Jesus Christ. Our merciful Lord, as a meek lamb, saying unto them, Whom seek ye? They answered with a sharp spirit, Jesus of Nazareth! Our Lord said again, Egosum, it is I. I saw Judas come and kiss in our Lord, and the authorities laid hands upon him full violently. Then had Our Lady and I much sorrow and great pain, 
to see the Lamb of Innocence so contemptibly manhandled and dragged by his own people that he was specially sent unto. And then I beheld in my spiritual vision the authorities putting cloth over our Lord's eyes, beating him and buffeting him in the head and boxing him on his sweet mouth, crying full cruelly unto him, Tell us now who smote thee. They spared not to spitten in his face in the most shameful wise that they could. And then Our Lady and me, her unworthy handmaiden, for the time wept and shed full sore, for the authorities fared so foul and venomously with our blissful Lord. And they would not spare to lug his blissful ears and draw the hair of his beard. And anon after I saw them draw off his clothes and maken him all naked and drew him forth before them as if he had been the worst malefactor in all the world. And he went forth full meekly before them, all mother naked as the day he was born, to a pillar of stone, and spake no word against them, but let them do and say what they would. And then they bound him to the pillar as tight as they could, and beaten him on his fair white body with rods and whips and scourges. And then I thought, Our Lady wept wondrously sore, and therefore I must needs weep and cry, when I saw such visionary sights in my soul, as vividly and as verily as if it had been done indeed in my physical sight. I saw in my contemplation our Lord Jesus Christ bounden to a pillar and his hands were bounden above his head and then I saw sixteen men with sixteen scourges and each scourge had eight pallets of lead on the end and every pallet was full of sharp prickles as it had been the rowels of a spur. And the men with the scourges made agreement that each of them should give an our Lord forty strokes. When I saw this piteous sight, I wept and cried right loud, as if I should burst for sorrow and pain. And when our Lord was indeed beaten and scourged, the authorities loosed him from the pillar and gave him his cross for to bear an on his shoulder. And then I thought that Our Lady and I went by another way for to meet with him. And when we met with him, we saw him bearing the heavy cross with great pain. It was so heavy and so cumbersome that scarcely he could bear it. And then Our Lady said unto him, Ah, oh, my sweet son, let me help to bear that heavy cross. And she was so weak that she could not, but fell down and swooned and lay still, as if she had been a dead woman. 
Then I saw our Lord fall down by his mother, and comforten her as well as he might, with many sweet words. When I heard the words, and saw the compassion that the mother had of the son, and the son of his mother, then I wept, sobbed, and cried, as though I should have died for pity and compassion. I went forth in contemplation through the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ to the place there he was nailed to the cross. And then I saw the authorities with such violence rent off our Lord's precious body, a cloth of silk, the which was cleaven and hardened so sadly and stiffly to our Lord's body with his precious blood, that it drew away all the flesh and the skin of his blessed body, and renewed his precious wounds, and made the blood to run down all about and on every side. Then that precious body appeared to my vision as raw as a thing that were near flayed out of the skin, full piteous and rueful to be holden. And so had I new sorrow, such that I wept and cried right sore. And anon after I beheld how the cruel authorities led his precious body to the cross, and so then took a long nail, all rough and gnarled, and set to on his hand, and with great violence and cruelty they drove it through his hand. His blissful mother beholding, and myself, how his precious body shrank and drew together with all sinews and veins in that precious body for pain that it suffered and felt. We sorrowed and mourned and sighed full sore. Then I saw with my spiritual vision how the authorities fastened ropes on the other hand, for the sinews and veins were so shrunken with pain that it might not come to the hole that they had marked therefore, and drew thereupon to make it reach with the hole. And so they drew his blessed feet in the same manner. And then I thought in my soul, I heard Our Lady say to the authorities, Alas, ye cruel officers, why fare ye so with my sweet son, and he did you never none harm? Ye fill mine heart full of sorrow. And then I thought they spoken again roughly, and put her away from her son.
And anon I saw them take up the cross, with our Lord's body hanging thereon, and maiden great noise and great cry, and lifted it up from the earth a certain distance, and so then letten the cross fallen down into the mortise. And then our Lord's body shaked and shuddered, and all the joints of that blissful body burst and went in asunder, and his precious wounds runnen down with rivers of blood on every side. And so I had ever more cause of more of weeping and sorrowing. And then I heard our Lord hanging on the cross say these words to his mother, Woman, see thy son of Saint John the Evangelist. Then I thought Our Lady fell down and swooned, and Saint John took her up in his arms and comforted her with sweet words as well as he could or might. I said then to our Lord, so it seemed, Alas, Lord, thou leavest her a careworn mother. What shall we now do? And how shall we bear in this great sorrow that we shall have for thy love? And then I heard the two thieves speak unto our Lord, and our Lord said to the one thief, This day thou shalt be in with me in paradise. Then I was glad of that answer, and prayed our Lord for his mercy, that he would be in as gracious to my soul when I should pass and out of this world as he was to the thief. For I was worse, I thought, than any thief. And I thought our Lord commended his spirit into his Father's hands, and therewith he died. Then I thought I saw Joseph of Arimathea taken down our Lord's body off the cross and laid it before Our Lady on a marble stone. Our Lady had then a manner of joy when her dear son was taken down off the cross and laid on the stone before her. And then our blissful Lady bowed down to her son's body and kissed his mouth and wept so plenteously over his blessed face that she washed away the blood of his face with the tears of her eyes. And then I thought I heard Mary Magdalene say to Our Lady, I pray you, Lady, give me leave to handle and kiss in his feet, for at this get I grace. Anon Our Lady gave leave to her and all those that were thereabout to do what worship and reverence they would to that precious body. And anon Mary Magdalene took Our Lord's feet and Our Lady's sisters took his hands, the one sister one hand, the other sister another hand, and wept full sore in kissing of those hands and of those precious feet. And duly I saw Saint John the Evangelist, Joseph of Arimathea, 
and other friends of our Lord, common and wooden burying our Lord's body, and prayed to Our Lady that she would suffer them to bury in that precious body. Our doleful lady said to them, Sirs, would ye taken away from me my son's body? I might never have looked upon him enough while he lived, I pray you, let me have him now he is dead, and parteth not my son and me asunder. And if ye will, nonetheless, bury in him, I pray you, buryeth me with him, for I may not leave without him. And I thought they prayed Our Lady so fair, till at the last Our Lady let them bury in her dear son with great worship and with great reverence, as belongeth to them to do. <laughs> 